So New Brunswick's in a snap election. Welcome to August and September of 2020 in the middle of a pandemic. Pay attention to how the media are framing the whole thing because they're trying really hard to put it back into the box that you've had for the past 40 years and disregarding the fact that just two years ago, there was a vote for a four-way minority government. One example of that is how they covered the vaccination vote in the legislature. Take a look at CBC and Jacques Portras and what they wrote back in June about this story. Unless you know the reasoning and the decision-making and the logic and the emotion behind the vote, you will only be left with the reporter's interpretation of events. This is going to run all the way through the coming election. How is it then that uh, Megan Mitten and Kevin Arsenault and David Kuhn of the Green Party with the three abstentions from it are not treated the same way as Ross Wetmore? Because Dominic Cardi says that uh, they failed in their obligation and more or less they wimped out from their voting. But he doesn't say the same thing about Mr. Wetmore. Why did the media not give that the same attention from within the same party? Here's a clip with David Kuhn that we had just last week in an interview, and he explains in depth why the Green Party decided to abstain. And you decide for yourself if you think it was legitimate or not, but at least you're getting the full story. And one day, maybe CBC and Global and CTV and the rest will give you the full coverage so you as a voter will have better information. Brought in the bill to um, uh, change the exemptions on mandatory vaccinations. So for nine months um, from that bill being presented, I assumed it was a no-brainer. I was going to vote for it. As Greens, we actually take our job seriously about digging down into bills and seeing if they need to be improved, or if there are flaws in them or not adequate. And... Uh, you know, nine months later, I was I was uh, working at co at the committee stage where you do that, you dig into the bill, and it turned out uh, it turned out that our vaccination rates are good, um, that uh, very few people, our parents, are actually using these exemptions, um, so we've got safe levels of vaccinations, very few people are actually using the exemptions. Um, yes. Uh, government should have the ability to eliminate the exemptions if if our vaccination levels are threatened in any way um, but uh, that's not the case right now so i tried to make a, a, a an amendment to it which said uh, yes government should have the ability to uh, eliminate these exemptions when necessary it's not necessary right now otherwise the chief medical officer of health will be out there uh, you know storming the ramparts demanding that uh, the exemptions be gone today but she wasn't. In fact, the committee, she said it's not needed right now. Our chief medical officer of health. So I'm going, I'm thinking, okay, um, then why don't we provide that power to get rid of the exemptions when necessary? Because uh, the, the impact of that is having a few children being barred from uh, their right to a public education. So if it's not necessary right now, why impose that on those children? Mm -hmm. And is this the backstory to abstaining? So that's it. So when my amendment failed, <laughs> yeah, uh, the the minister refused to accept it, um, and I said, "Well, clearly the evidence you provided says the 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 the, the, the need to uh, change those exemptions uh, now is is not there, and maybe I agree. Maybe it will be necessary in the future. So let's just." modify the bill to provide that authority to do so when necessary. Um, and that way, kids aren't going to be unnecessarily thrown out of school. But he refused. So uh, what was I going to do? I had started out for nine months um, planning on voting for the bill because I support vaccinations, and I thought it's a no-brainer. Every child should be vaccinated in our school system. Our mandatory vaccination laws have been in place for 38 years. They've served us so well. Um, and so uh, when it failed, I thought, well, I'm not going to vote against it because I'm not against the principle of this bill. But I can't vote for it because it's, it's got this flaw in it. Yeah. The flaw being that uh, the, the, the authority to eliminate the exemptions is, uh, is good, 
but uh, the action, the implementation of that is not necessary at the moment because our vaccination rates are, are good, they're safe. Uh, so let's just say, make that change say when it's necessary. Well, uh, so given that, I, the, the, the option really was to say, well, I will vote for it even though it's not necessary at the moment, but there's going to be some kids thrown out of school. They said, well, okay, we talked about it uh, among us, and we, well, the sensible thing, the sensible thing, it seems, would be uh, to abstain then and explain why. Um, what seems sensible to us, uh, working the legislature uh, on a bill that had a flaw in it, um, turned out to be, you know, problematic for a lot of people. A lot of people were surprised and concerned about that, um, and would have assumed I would, would have assumed what I'd assumed I was going to do for months and months until I really dug into the bill, and that was vote for it. Yep. Yep. So, um, so that's and but, but what I learned was exemption with an explanation uh, it doesn't really work well in terms of uh, people um, being able to, to understand that because because when I uh, when people stop me on the street and ask me about it and I explain briefly they, they to a person they say well oh I'm relieved I understand what why you did what you did it all starts with the story and if we have a place where we can share our stories, then we have a sense of how to build community. The Dennis Report's theme is everything's connected. If we nurture that connection, New Brunswick can do amazing things. But first it starts with listening and sharing our stories. The Dennis Report.ca, Patreon or PayPal. Thanks.